Kate Road. I'm an artist uh, designer based in Melbourne. I've come from a fine art background, so I guess in a lot of ways my designs, they're, they're not so uh, constrained by ideas of practicality and functionality, and they tend to have a more um, fantastical kind of aspect to them. The style of work that I make is very influenced by um, Baroque and Rococo and I'm, I'm sort of repulsed and attracted by it in equal measure. And the thing I love about it is in that making process, I've always done from the time I was a child, any drawing, anything I did was excessively detailed. It was all about spending hours just working on something and kind of going into a bit of a like a men meditative mental space. And so the detail in a way is me just kind of going into a space. I had always been really interested in working with uh, resins because I, I had this I know, this weird fascination with transparency and transparent materials. Um, over the years, I just found that it was a material that I, I had a real affinity with. It's something you can be very experimental with and you can really push it in a lot of ways, as well as it being, you know, because it, it essentially comes as a, a sort of water clear type mix, you can really work with it in a number of ways with colour. You can have very intense colours, you can have it as transparent or opaque and pearl. There's just so many options. So when um, Simone invited me to participate in the Rig Prize, she, she sort of gave us a very loose brief, which was to come up with a, a complete interior concept which for me was just, you know, like a kid in a candy store. I, I, a lot of my artwork has been based around doing complete room installations. So this was almost like a dream opportunity to have this whole environment to present a body of work in. From the very beginning, I just knew straight away what I wanted to do and I just set about making it. I just sort of began with the Imagining a, a sort of a big table as the central piece and then some, and sort of, I guess I, over the years I've built up as well as resin, there's a, a range of materials that I have a real affinity and love of working with and, and another of them is um, hair extension, acrylic hair extensions and um, fake fur and so I was imagining an environment that incorporated all those sort of signature materials. In a way it's I feel that it's like a bit of a greatest hits up to this moment presentation where it's taken everything sort of worked on on the, on the last 15 years and brought it all together. In a way it's been quite strange sort of transitioning into design-based projects because for the first 10 years that I was working, I never had to consider really practical concerns. Like things didn't really have to be functional. Like I would make a table or something, but it was just a prop. So it could be very rough around the edges and, and quite unpolished. When I started to do the more industrial design type projects, I had to actually really refine it and work my way through, you know, just things like finishing until I started making, sort of started by making jewellery. And, um, you know, you just can't have sharp edges. I think it's been quite a good thing for my um, artwork as well, because it means that I look at the work in a lot more detail. I do a lot more finishing and refinement and, and I've learned a lot of new techniques. So everything kind of feeds into it and I've become I don't know if I'm there yet, but I've become a lot better at um, working through structural issues and, you know, like you could actually sit on the chairs in the exhibition. They're not just props. They have, they have steel reinforcement in them, which is something I would never have uh, contemplated beforehand. <laughs>